Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Obsessed. This is present day Brooke. And I just wanted to let you know that the episode that you're about to see was recorded. This was the first episode of Obsessed that was ever recorded um, in July with one of my best friends, Megan, who most of you know and love. And those of you that don't know and love her will know and love her after you watch this. Um, you know, I just like to give you a little disclaimer that it was filmed a while ago because, for example, in the other episode with Brittany that was uh, filmed a while ago, I had said that I could not get into A Court of Thorns and Roses. And as you now know, things change. So I just want to let you know, maybe there's something like that in this episode. I don't know. I can't watch because I can't listen to the sound of my own voice. But I just like to give that disclaimer. And I think that's pretty much it. So we can just head right into that episode. I'm excited for you guys to see it. <laughs> well, Brooke, you don't always have to be a star. I know, but you do if you are going to be in the biggest boy band in the world. I got so worked up that I had thrown up on myself in my stroller. In my 14-year-old self, I said, those are hot men. Men. And look at them now. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> babies. That was kind of just like a casual interest, mm. which I guess maybe a little bit more than casual. <laughs> so just kind of start whenever. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling like I need you to start talking. Okay. Give me one second. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. It's just the first word that's killing me. Like it's feeling what like. What do you want the first word to be? I don't, I don't know why I can't. Hey. I hate when everyone's always like, hey guys. Okay. Scratch that. Okay. No, but hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Obsessed. I'm obsessed. Uh, me, Megan, I was just going to say. Um, so this is a podcast for people who can't just like things mm -hmm. a normal amount and kind of take an interest and then it becomes their entire life. Um, so that's how I would describe myself and this podcast. So moving forward, this podcast is just going to be a deep dive into my obsessions, the obsessions of my friends. I have never met anyone in my life that I have felt has matched the obsessive energy that I have as much as you, Brooke, my dear friend agree. Megan. And I want to thank you for making me feel less alone. <laughs> Brooke, seen? This is the honor of my lifetime. I could not be happier to have you here. Everyone, this is Megan, one of my closest best friends. Um, yeah, Megan, do you want to give like maybe a little intro of yourself and also how you came to be somebody who is obsessed with things? Sure. Well, I'm intro. I'm Megan. I'm Brooke's friend. Mm -hmm. Um, I met Brooke like almost three years ago at this point, which is kind of crazy. Um, when I first moved to LA and when Brooke first moved to LA, um, my obsession origin story begins very young, mm -hmm. three to four. My first target Billy Crystal. Of course. Now that is going to seem a little out of left field <laughs> for a young three-year-old African-American <laughs> girl. But what happened was is I'm not certain. <laughs> Sometimes things just come to you totally as a premonition or as a, as a vision from God. And I was given Billy C. You know what that reminds me of really quickly? Mm -hmm. In Twilight, when Jacob imprints mm -hmm. on Renesmee, there's not necessarily like logically – a sense to it because it's a it's a baby and he's seeing this baby and he's like I for whatever reason love this baby and and will devote my life to it and protect it mm -hmm. that's what happened with you and Billy Crystal I yes, think you imprinted exactly. on him yeah. I imprinted on him um and he's really become formative for I would say every relationship I've ever had ever since but that's like a, a my therapist problem mm -hmm. um so that started ages three to four mm -hmm. then I kind of went into pop divas Okay. Okay. Britney Spears, Beyonce, yes. um, even Pink for a brief period of time. Pink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. I didn't know that. But that was a very brief, okay. extremely brief. Then full blown male obsession. Okay. We've we've left women to the wayside. Okay. Um. Jesse McCartney. Goes without saying. Um. Kind of like our Aaron Carter's. Yes. Yep. Um. Jonas Brothers. Mm -hmm. Jonas Brothers was my real first step into, okay, this is cl now clinical mm -hmm. behavior. More entering more <laughs> the psychosis space. Yes, yeah. psychosis space. Mm -hmm. I love um, it, Megan. Also, can I also briefly mention, also in the psychosis space, American Dragon Jake Long. 
Megan, I'm glad you said something about having an obsession that is not human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where I started. And I'll, I'll circle back to that, but keep going. But there's just not enough representation in that community. In the non-human uh -oh. space. <laughs> totally. totally. But um, then we get into the, the real meat of it, which was Justin Bieber, which then therefore led us into One Direction. Which is what we're going to be tackling today mm -hmm. is um, the One Direction obsession. Briefly, just circling back to, I guess, how I kind of got started in the mm -hmm. obsessive space. I think my first like true fixation was the count okay. from, from Sesame street. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm pro Muppet a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Is he, are they Muppets? Mm -hmm. But they're different than like Miss Piggy and Kermit. Yeah. But they're all like Jim, Jim Henson. They're company. all Jim. Okay. Yeah. Well the count is where I kind of started. And then my parents were noticing that there was, you know, some uh, obsession and mm -hmm. fixation on the count. And they took me to uh, Sesame street on ice. Mm -hmm. And, I had I gotten so worked up that I had thrown up on myself in my stroller. <laughs> Dude, I actually don't think I knew that information. Be, because of the count. And then eventually transitioned to Woody mm -hmm. from Toy Story. And then I think the first human was Clay Aiken. Okay. Yeah. That was like when it started to become like more romantic. Um, yeah. And then. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'd like Do you that. think that was more like face, voice? face and voice a bit of hysteria just in general I think that I've always been really drawn to just pure talent mm -hmm. and I and <laughs> yes. I saw that in clay mm -hmm. and I still do to this day even yeah, though he's not too. and even though he's moved forward with becoming a politician, politician that's okay I know that he has got a voice that has never been replicated but moving on from clay we had tons of others in the mix was one direction and that's and that's where we are today. I'm so blessed. Yeah. So I guess let's let's dive into One Direction. And the thing about this podcast is this is a space for people who are obsessed with the thing that we're talking about. And it's also a space for people who know nothing about it. I.e. Kenny, you know nothing about One Direction, right? Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. nothing. And yeah. Izzy, you do? I had a fan account. Had a fan account. So we're catering to both of those demographics. So we need to be clear and explaining things that we think might be common knowledge exactly you know mm -hmm. starting with kenny i bet you didn't know this one direction started 2010 they were on british x factor and they all auditioned as single acts wow. they did not know each other going wow. in um and they weren't formed as a group until later when they were all eliminated as individuals and Simon well it was actually yeah, we know now we know now it was the artifacts have been, have been it pulled. was Nicole Scherzinger mm -hmm. um but Simon had taken credit for forming One Direction as a band saw something in each of them but we know now it was really Nicole Scherzinger and and Simon kind of took the credit but whatever um but yeah they were all individuals at first and I want to talk a little bit about um, their individual auditions. Okay. If you don't mind, Megan. Are I, we gonna watch them or just I, discuss I them? think I think we can and we should. Okay. Um let's pull up let's pull up Harry. So Harry did Isn't She Lovely, which this Oh my God, so powerful. I'm to me, cry. watching this gives me goosebumps. Like a stomach ache in the sense that like you know that like nostalgic feeling that's like kind of unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Like you get this it gives me that because it's like so it feels so like emotional and I know that we will never go back to this time Can I where no something? one knows who Harry Styles is and he is singing with all his heart. Can I say yeah. something Megan, that might can. seem hyperbolic, but yeah. I just like, I must say it. Like, I feel like Harry's audition, I imagine that's probably how Albert Einstein's mother felt giving birth to him, <laughs> seeing almost like a prim, like, oh my God, I know what this child is going to give to the world. And we're watching it happen live. It is freakish to be able to go back in time and watch this video. And no one knew what was going to happen. But we we know that Harry is going to become Harry Styles. Roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, I'm Harry Styles. Okay. His voice has changed too. Completely. I guess that makes complete sense because puberty. <laughs> okay, so tell me a bit about you. Um, I work in a bakery. Tat I want that tattooed on my chest. Of course. <laughs> All right, what are you going to sing? I'll do Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. Okay, good luck. <laughs> Brave, too. Such a bold Not voice. Not an easy one to cover. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she one? Simon's, like, got money bags in his eyes. I mean, every hair on my body is standing up. We just want to talk about the confidence that it takes for a 16-year-old boy to do that. Never. I couldn't do that at however old I am, 26. <laughs> In a million years. No, never. But just as somebody who has never seen that, Kenny, what are your initial thoughts? Well, first off, incredible voice. Yeah. I mm -hmm. can see the talent immediately. Yeah. Um, and you can see in Simon's eyes that he's planning to take credit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm, I, I can't say that my hairs are standing up like you yet, mm -hmm. but I think maybe once we see the recipe come together okay. with the other three, but I do recognize the talent. I want to be very clear about that. Now, would it make your hair yeah. stand up if you kind of just thought about where he is now mm -hmm. compared to what we just saw? Really think about, I really want you to close your eyes and think about yeah. selling out concert, the biggest pop star in the world Yeah, from, from that. Well, and before this, my only... Uh, point of reference with Harry Styles was that he was in the World War II film Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I thought, wow, this guy's had a good career yeah. after X Factor. Yeah. So, wow. Um, yeah. So when you put it in that context, yeah. I, I guess he's he's done pretty well for himself. You could say that again. Mm -hmm. Megan, thoughts? I want to say we always talk about the scarf. The scarf was kind of pivotal. We never talk about the bracelet. Are you, are you seeing kind of the cloth bracelet happening here? Is that a piece of his sweater? It looks like it could almost have been a cardigan, like maybe one of Anne's cardigans. <laughs> and he was able to wrap that around for support. He has always been ahead of the game in terms of style Fashion. and, you know, bending those pushing norms. boundaries. And we can see that here. Now, this is my main takeaway from Harry's audition. One, I think it brilliant. Like he would have gotten standing ovation from me. Mm -hmm. um, something to know is that he got a yes from Simon. Mm -hmm. a yes from is that Cheryl? Up there. Um, Nicole. Nicole. A yes from Nicole and a no from Lewis. Louis or Lewis? Louis. Louis. Can we pull up Louis? And I want to know like why we haven't, like why is he not in jail? <laughs> mm -hmm. And why have it, we at least not done like a thorough evaluation psychologically? psychologically? Like how, what was he, what was he thinking? You know, it's like, I think because Simon had said yes, uh -huh. there always has to be a Simon. There, there has to be a Debbie Downer somewhere. You well, know? then riddle me this, Megan. Why did he say yes to Louis Tomlinson? Can you pull up Louis Tomlinson's audition for me? Now, let me say before we get into Louis Tomlinson's audition, why you might be compelled to say yes to Louis over Harry. Boyish charm. You think Harry didn't have the boyish charm? No, he has a level. You think he has Louis had more boyish Look charm. at that smile. Look at the smile on that on that freeze frame. Can Nicole was captivated. No, he was just a little more reserved. And I think Louis was able to. You think he has more star power? Yes, I think he was able to present star forward. Okay, I don't know if I feel that way. But also think about the time. It's 2010. The look, the hair, yeah. the kind of vibe personality. It's giving very, hey there, Delilah which was yeah. in the zeitgeist, which was in. in and that's what he's going to sing for us right now. Go ahead and press play for me on Louie. <laughs> Lulu. Hello. Hey, all right? What's your name? My name's Louie Tomlinson. Oh, wait. This is unseen footage. This isn't Hey There, Delilah. They gave him two chances. They gave him two chances. I've never seen this. This was his first. When I was young, I never knew. I've never seen this what? one. And I want to say, if Louis, if you're watching this, I do love you, and I think you've come a long way. Absolutely. Okay, so then this is where we get Hey There, Delilah, mm -hmm. which is what I've seen and everybody else has seen. You have to shake the nerves. Uh-huh. Oh, it's what you do to me. Oh, it's what you Boy's charm. Remember that boy's charm. Okay, but it's a singing show. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that boy's charm? He got, okay, you can end it. <laughs> you can end it. He, 
he got three yeses. That's, I mean, so, that's insane. I'm not saying that he should have gotten three yeses. I'm just saying I can understand where Louis was able to say yes. I don't think I am, Megan, as much as I love Louis. I'm just, we can be happy that miracles happen. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, but it's just also to have said no to Harry mm -hmm. as as Louis, jo and as make Judge mistakes. Louis did. And people make mistakes. But um, um, we don't, we haven't checked in with Louis about that mistake. And I just want to know how he's feeling. I bet that keeps him up at night. I hope it does. <laughs> I think like we need to like figure out what went wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, that's just something I think about that I don't think that we talk about enough is Judge Louis and his. Because I had actually completely forgotten. So it's important to bring awareness to that. Yeah. But I am, I'm seeing his train of thought. I'm not okay. by any means, um, but that's fine. Okay, so those are the two like auditions that really stick out to me, mm -hmm. and then Niall. Well, Katie I also Perry, think Liam's is a standout. Yeah, do you want to do you want to talk? Not about only Liam? one because Liam had um, auditioned prior, yeah, and come back. Uh huh. He had come his, back. His voice had was able to mature, and he was able to get more confident, mm -hmm. etc. Two, his future baby mama in the judges stand watching him at seventeen. Yes. 16 or 17 right. um and then giving him the the golden yes to Ga she gave him did she give him a golden buzzer i feel like she did and then later moved forward with having his child yes okay that's a great pipeline mm -hmm. um okay yeah but he was great liam was great and it was very clear i think from liam's uh, liam definitely had the most vocal talent at the time okay you disagree. You think it was Louis? I, I no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was Zane. But I think Zane so, and Liam were very comparable. Yeah, I think Liam was just like the most trained. <clears throat> okay, Zane sung "You Should Let Me Love You." Did a great job. Mm -hmm. And then Niall sung. Did Niall sing "Baby" by Justin Bieber? I don't think so. Okay, can we look at what Niall sang? So sick. So sick. They so yeah. They both sang. Wait, didn't Zane sing "So Sick"? Okay, whatever. But they all made it through. Um, and then they all eventually got cut. Mm -hmm. And then Simon brought them back, the five of them, as a band. And then they went on to the judge's house where they sang Torn. Oh. And that's what got them through to the live show as a band. That was their first performance as a band, right? Yes. Um, and that... <gasps> The sea urchin? Are you thinking of the yes. sea urchin? There was a lot of drama there because Louis had previously been stung by a sea urchin that morning. And they didn't know if had he was, a terrible reaction. had a terrible reaction, was in the hospital, and they didn't know if he was going to make it back for that performance. Um, but he did, and he kind of just he stood limped. there, swayed in the background, and that's kind of what he did for the rest of his time. <laughs> <laughs> Until they could get a pen in his hand, he was swaying. Yeah, so he kind of just swayed in the background. And honestly, so did Niall, mostly, mm -hmm. as well. It was really Harry, Liam, and, and Zane, Zane kind of pulling pulling the band yeah, through X vocally. Factor. Hi, guys. We want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Cora. There's so much to consider when choosing the right products for our skin, hair, etc. But what about what we use down there? I'm talking about period products. They aren't all created equally. That's why I'm so happy that I found Cora, the period care brand that you can feel good about using, period. If you haven't tried Cora yet, now is the time. Cora makes comfortable and effective period care products with clean ingredients. Cora's pads and liners are made with a super soft, breathable, 100% organic cotton top sheet. They're whisper thin, yet super absorbent, no worrying about leaks. Plus, they're gentle on sensitive skin and made without chlorine, fragrances, or dyes. Personally, I love that Cora has comfortable pads for all my needs, from liners for my lightest days to extra long overnight pads when I need extra coverage. I love it. Best of all, with every purchase, Cora provides period products and body education to people who might otherwise go without. I love how they are giving back. I feel good about choosing Cora. I know you will too. Pick up Cora pads and tampons at your local Target or CVS, or have them delivered directly to your door by visiting my special URL, Cora.life slash OWB. Right now, when you order online with my special promo code, you'll get 20% off all Cora products. Go to Cora.life slash OWB and use my promo code OWB. That's 20% off at C-O-R-A dot life slash OWB with promo code OWB. 
We're taking a quick break to thank our sponsor, Nutrafol. Did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women? If you're among them, no, you're not alone. Thinning is normal, but it's not openly talked about and going through it can feel lonely and frustrating. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeking thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Physician formulated with drug-free ingredients, Nutrafol supplements support healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism as they evolve throughout a woman's life. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. In a clinical study, 80% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplements for six months. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscriptions and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code OWB. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code OWB. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code OWB. But uh, may I ask a question yeah. real mm-hmm. quick? So, Kenny, uh, always. How much time had lapsed between these auditions to then forming a band for the live show? That's. Um, I think it was just. I don't think we know like how long the show uh-huh. took, but it was basically just like a few episodes of them on their own, and then I think a few episodes of them like as a band, and then they went onto the live shows as a band, and then they didn't even win. They came in third, third place. Third place. Th- so who were the other two acts? Because that they must have been incredible. Kenny, exactly. No, to this <laughs> day, don't know. Wow. It was like Matt I, something. Um. Yeah, because Harry did the whispering on the on, um, on stage when he won. His name was Matt. He wore a fedora. Yeah. Um, and then there was another Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson, Ferguson. Mm-hmm. who Zane dated. Yes. Okay. So then we have that was 2010 X mm-hmm. Factor. July then, 23rd, 2010. Where did you get that from? Just the st- not stored in your brain? Yeah. Okay. July 23rd, 2010 was the day that they were formed. Megan? Awesome. Brooke, did you not know? Mm-mm. I know March 25th. The day the music died? The day the music died. <laughs> <laughs> and Zane had left the band, but July 23rd, that's two days after your birthday. Yeah, Brooke. Okay. It was completely transformative yeah. for me. Okay, so... X Factor 2010 and then What Makes You Beautiful came out mm-hmm. in 2011 and oh that for God. me is when shit hit the fan. Absolutely. Did you know them while they were on X Factor or just So post? I I think What Makes You Beautiful came out like August 2011. Uh-huh. That summer I had found myself on YouTube in the video diary space. The video diaries that was they were making like diaries essentially in video form video <laughs> diaries while they were on X Factor and it was just like them basically just like fucking around and, and being boys and we fell in love with them. Wow. Yeah. I would say that yeah. that took place for me probably like July 2011. Okay. Because I remember doing a lot of time conversions mm-hmm. to try to listen to British radio to hear them kind of going on radio tours. Um. That was a completely transformative summer for me. I lost a lot of brain cells. Like, um, it was insane. the The staircase where they did those videos, I can close my eyes and, and be and there in a see second. See the cracks in the staircase in the wall. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't mind watching. They are so little. Uh, Look at I, Niall. Long time. Yeah, very long time. Uh, They're just like teenage boys. No, it, it was like, and I wasn't going to talk to teenage boys. No. When I, what's insane is thinking about when I looked at them here as in my 14 year old self i said those are hot men men and look at them now they're like (laughs) babies oh my god that just goes to show you that like any time that you're fixating on a celebrity like they're they're just like little they were teens children normal people you know that's important to kind of take people off a pedestal and and recognize (laughs) that they are human Mm -hmm. and we're teenagers and had their hearts broken and had math class and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly, Brooke. So then 
I think I didn't know that there was a difference when What Makes You Beautiful came out. I didn't know that there was a difference between One Direction and One Republic. <laughs> okay. Until someone had let me know mm -hmm. that there was. And then I said, oh, then who's One Direction? And my friend Amelia showed me a picture. And that was it. You'll never forget where my, you saw your first picture. Of on the direction. softball field. <laughs> and, my and my life was never the same. Oh, my God. And then immediately I went into the Tumblr space mm -hmm. and I had a One Direction Tumblr. Can I ask you, had you been in the Tumblr Tumblr space previously? So I was just on regular Tumblr. It's still up. Mm -hmm. B-A-V-V-V, bav.tumblr.com, where I would just post like random aesthetic stuff. Mm -hmm. But then me and my two friends made a specific One Direction Tumblr account, which ultimately led to the end of our friendships. Wow. Because... I would post One Direction Imagines exclusively, mm -hmm. which was like the stepping stone of fan fiction as we know it. Mm -hmm. It was like little brief, like imagine um, that you just failed your math test and you're really sad and you're leaving your class and you see Harry with a bouquet of flowers and you feel better. And I was like, damn, <laughs> that's, that's art. That is, that is good stuff. So that's kind of what I was reblogging and my friends who also on the account thought that it was too sexual. So they were oh. they were upset with me. And the other girl was only reblogging Larry oh. stuff, which is really controversial if you don't know. Larry is like a ship couple name of Louie and Harry, who people thought were in, in love. And it actually oh. was like pretty damaging because people like were so intense about it that apparently like their management told Louie and Harry like you like stop like stop like stop your friendship like stop being next to each other and things like and they just like stopped looking at each other basically because it was so intense the people that wanted them together that's horrible yeah so then that one girl was reblogging only Larry stuff and I said you really need to stop it's not it's not good and then the, the third party of our blog would only reblog there were people that were like if this doesn't get like 300 reblogs I'll kill myself mm -hmm. and she kept reblogging those and I was like you can't oh. you can't feed into that <laughs> um so then we had we had all no no it's like insane um but we had all gone our separate ways because we didn't we didn't have the same artistic vision right exactly yeah. well I'm kind of aligned with yours yeah and the imagine one shot fan mm -hmm. fiction space I was also on tumblr um one Direction Tumblr at the time, but I was really just more interested in the photography, yeah. in the images, in um, the videos, and mm -hmm. basically any footage of them I could get my hands on, I needed my eyes to be glued on at all times. Completely on board with you, but I really think like the imagines, it's like where, I think that's where my maladaptive daydreaming like really started mm -hmm. because before that I had like, daydreamed and stuff but it was never like I am sitting down to intentionally disassociate from reality yeah. and enter an alternate state mm -hmm. whereas these imagines I would be like okay it's time it's time to read my imagines exactly. and I would sit down for hours and completely can I ask did you a like space? a more like YN imagine mm -hmm. or you like to be this character's name is Charlotte no YN which is okay. you your name. your name you insert yourself into the imagine i have a few pulled okay here's one that i really truly believe at the time would have i would have really enjoyed and would have given me like goosies goosies and okay. i would be like this is this is what romance is okay okay you and your boyfriend niall are going out oh to the God. club <laughs> you <laughs> you have on a pretty pencil skirt while niall is in his <laughs> <laughs> well niall is in his cute polo as usual, mm -hmm. you guys are dancing and having a great time when you notice that he seems like he's puffing his chest out and pulling you closer. Oh my God. You immediately know that he's getting defensive. Sure enough, two guys were staring at you and your boobs and saying rude no. comments. Niall soon walks <laughs> up to them and says, do we have a problem here? That's my oh. princess. And it would be great if you assholes shut up. Before you know it, he gets himself into a fist fight with two guys. Liam, Harry, Zane, and Louie quickly assist Niall and get the other two to leave. Niall's lip was bleeding, so you quickly took him to the bathroom. You're blotting his lip as you thank him for defending you. He looks at you with his big blue eyes and tells you, nobody says that about my princess. He pulls you in for a kiss. You knew that he was absolutely perfect for you. 
Megan, I swear <laughs> to God, at that time, I would have had full body goosebumps. It would have been in a medically induced coma. I would have been like truly like reading that to my parents being like, <laughs> check this, check this out. <laughs> And you know, once they started developing fan fiction on like Wattpad and stuff, full full versions that you could read on a Kindle, on a device, my parents thought I was the most avid reader in America. I never like I tr- I never got past the Imagines with One Direction because I was needing like I couldn't get myself to just focus on like one story with mm-hmm. them. I need a different plot point after different plot point, like short, concise, like I need it all. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't just focus, especially because I wanted something with all the boys. Right. Because I liked Niall and Harry. Well, like, yeah, but then you'd have to get yourself into kind of a nary crossover. The, the best ones were when like you're dating Niall and Harry, Harry professes back. his <laughs> love for you and you're like, what? Yes. what do I do? And you truly like are like genuinely having like a, a, a crisis. crisis. But then- Wait, they, but- were, you a, were you a Nary girl? Megan, Who- I'm so glad that you have brought this up because, you know, there were different girls that liked different members of the band mm-hmm. and you were either like a Niall girl, Harry girl, whatever. So I have I have different theories about what, member of the band you liked means about you. Okay. I identified as a Nile girl. Me as well. But I think like truly like my heart was with Harry, but I didn't like, I knew I didn't have a shot. Right. So I just like kind of used Nile. I did love him. And this is not to say I didn't love Nile with all my heart, but I did use Nile as kind of a protective shield around my heart mm-hmm. because I knew Harry would hurt me. Okay. Too much. I have something to say. So I think that I... I don't know, but I do have a theory that there are some people who felt the same way with kind of using Niall as a more quote unquote attainable option, even though I still obviously had no shot with Niall as well. Yeah, I am. Um, I think that that is an appropriate course of action of, of thought. OK, because the impulse when you were given the visual of One Direction on the softball field, yeah. the obvious impulse was Harry Styles. There was just no the- way around seeing those five young men and not thinking Harry Styles. So first, everyone's first thought is Harry. Yes. But then once you are kind of like settled, once you get the information, once you have digested, then I think your like re- your like personality plays yeah. plays a part in it and you're drawn to the most connected personality. Yeah. And I was connected with Niall. Yeah. However, when I was faced with the image, my my heart and my brain were directing me actually towards same. And you can be like, whoa, really? I thought you were going to say Harry. Brooke? Megan, I have never met anyone who has been a Zane girl. Now, Brooke, you knowing me personally, you know I would never go for someone like angry, mean, tough. Like that's not really my thing. Right. You, however, do know I love men that are depressed. Yes. So, Megan, that is actually a good point. I didn't realize that you had developed that this young. Yeah, Brooke, I think it's kind of a subliminal thing mm-hmm. where I saw a deep sadness in his eyes mm-hmm. and said, I can fix that. For me, I always thought his heart, his heart's not in it. He is not as because in he this was ba- lost because he was lost. Uh, true. I wasn't looking at it in that way at that point. Mm-hmm. I was thinking he's not in it to win it. Mm-hmm. And therefore anybody that truly loves Zane can't 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 truly love the band cuz Zane doesn't love the band. Brooke, you could not be more wrong. It's like imagine I am I'm champ I am championing him to put his best foot forward. I could not imagine like a better career path for him. I think he has the best voice. I think he has the yes, best style. Agree. Like I am just like so pro him that I'm actually giving my all to him and the group to give him the best results. But here's what I'm going to say that is probably controversial. He's not a star. Well, Brooke, you don't always have to be a star. I know, but you do if you are going to be in the biggest boy band in the world. But he, he, couldn't, also, he couldn't he keep up didn't, and he, he didn't. also didn't know that he was signing up for that. Yeah, that is, that's, a, I mean, we could go in circles forever. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. When you're right, you're right, Megan. I just want to let you know like there are, are others like us who had that that affliction towards Zane that mm-hmm. we were not able to cure. Okay, well, I want to thank you for kind of making me think about Zane girls in a different light. Thank you. 
I think also the reason that I couldn't outwardly like love Harry is because all the like really hot girls right exactly loved Harry that's and I was like thing. okay well Niall but that's also like I always picked in the group kind of like the underdog mm-hmm. like I was a Kevin girl for the, the Jonas, Jonas, for the Jonas yeah. Brothers like I'm never I'm like a kind of like a Ringo girl like Beatles wise like I'm never going like Ross in the 1975 yeah exactly I'm never going for the star love it that's I never gonna be yeah. me and I think there's a lot of other women who feel the same way. I agree. So I've completely changed my tune. <laughs> okay. On Zane. Thank you. I will that. say anyone who was a Liam girl should be jailed. Wellness check. Jailed. I have I had not met any of them, had you? I have not. Vicky, but I, have, I have will you? say no. Mm-hmm. Louie girls now ahead of their time. Ahead of their time and now most that I know, actually all Louie girls I know are part of the LGBTQ community. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. I wonder what that's about. I think they felt safe. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm laughing, but I think they felt a genuine kindness from that man that is just untapped in stardom. He is like, I think he is just a good guy, Louie. And that's why I think that those girls were ahead of their time. Okay. Any questions? What questions do you have for me, Kenny? And mm-hmm. then Izzy. One question I have uh, on the point you just made about Louis, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. only seeing that audition, totally. I'm not, this is no disrespect, I'm not seeing the talent that maybe Harry had on stage. So what was it about him that won people over in the band? Because I'm not seeing a whole lot going on. I have to draw it back to that boyish charm. Mm. He had the most personality out of the whole group. There's a, um, a big One Direction like lexicon, like... Um, inside jokes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. He was the ringleader for all of them. Mm-hmm. He had the personality. And then once they had stopped, well, they never stopped being like a machine. Right. But once they had like a little bit of time to slow down, once he was able to get a pen in his hand, he is one of the greatest songwriters of our generation. And I will not hear anything otherwise. Which One Direction songs did he write? Basically, him and Liam wrote all of four and all of Made in the AM. Okay. Now, could you give us a few songs on some of those? Or not really at this time. Oh, Stockholm Syndrome. Uh-huh. Le- Louis wrote Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. One so of that, the best one. That should songs. go ahead and speak for itself. Mm-hmm. Um, Love You Goodbye. I like that one. Liam and Liam. Louis. Wow. Okay. How about... Can't think of Can't one. think of another song. Um, wait, I, Made oh, Where Do Broken Hearts Go? Incredible. That's Louis. Louis. Also, he's No Control, which is that's the most honestly like the first song that they had him like really sing on. Yeah. Like it's yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah. he's the chorus. Yeah. They didn't Powerful. really give him the mic a lot, <laughs> which is random. Um, Drag Me Down. Incredible. Louis. Really? Really? Did Harry participate in any sort of songwriting? Walking in the Wind. Okay. How about Zane? I think he was more vocals. Vocals and, and rest. Niall? I actually don't know. Me neither. I just know that Louis was really, really, really powerful. With Louis that. really did. Like, I don't know if they would have been relatable without Louis because yeah. he was just like silly and and fun. He's a glue guy. He is the glue. He's the glue. Kenny, yes. very yes. well said. Okay, I have... I really like I was this the imagines brought me back to a place and I have a few more that I want to read to you if you don't mind us Mm -hmm. going back. I would get so pissed off when they would make imagines that were like not taking the art of imagine seriously. For example, Mm -hmm. Louis throws a grape at you with a playful smile. You decide to throw one back at him, but you miss. So he starts laughing at you. You get so upset that you throw the entire plate at him, knocking him unconscious. I would get so, I was like, what? Like, this is not a joke. No, this this is is my livelihood. We're coming here for art. Yeah. And they would, for literature. They would always make those imagines. It's like Harry, like going out to sea to find his, (laughs) his long lost love. And then at the end, it's like, Harry, she's been dead for three years. Oh, I think. And I'm just like, come on, like, give me the, like, give me the good stuff. Wait, give me Niall punching someone in a club (laughs) on that same thought. Oh my God. On that same thought, I would get full body chills and be sobbing in my room when, you know, with the ones where they'd say, oh, you know, like you're going into the, to the hospital for your heart, your heart procedure. Yes. 
for your heart procedure yes. and Harry is holding your hand and he's like, babe, you're going to get through it. This is going to be like, you're going to feel so good on the other side. And then you go through your surgery, you wake up and you say, where's Harry? And the doctor says, who do you think gave you the heart? Megan, oh, I, I mean, I those were like, Megan, mm-mm. You have unlocked them. I, those, I have no words. Those were formative. And also, I don't, did you remember ever watching this video? It was a black video with white text that was set to um, Somewhere Only We Know. And it was kind of like a story of the boy's life from present day point of view. And then at the end of the video, it was able to be revealed that it was Harry telling them what had happened throughout their lives as he was sitting at the boys' graves. What? And that's fan-made? Yes. I have not been exposed to that, Brooke. Like, if I had to be an actor where I had to, like, get into character and, like, cry, I could still, to this day, watch that video and be sucked in. That sounds brutal. And it was kind of around, like, the Mr. X time. Uh Uh-huh. What's that? Oh. Mr. X? Yeah. What's Mr. X? Brooke, remember when they were doing um, maybe Madison Square Garden for the first time and there was the Twitter account, Mr. X, that like kept tweeting about how like they were going to bomb the show and about- No. Brooke. And then you had to obviously go on, on Omegle and get clues from Mr. X, who would then kind of just like lead you with a couple Bible verses. Oh, wait, verses. so this was not like a full police investigation? No, this was just like, and we and people were calling the police. Brooke, this is- groundbreaking One Direction like history. I don't know where I was. Oh my God. So did they get the FBI involved? Is this have- a case for the FBI? <laughs> it should have been. I had no idea. And then people kept going live on Twickham at the concert because they were like, Mr. X is going to do X, Y, like is going to drop the bomb. Why were they at the like- concert? I mean, if you're going to die, you might yeah, as well do it there. Go out. <laughs> um, oh my God. I just remember I was obviously like on the front lines fighting to protect them against Mr. X. And I was on Omegle um, for hours. And then Mr. X had proceeded to send me. So Mr. X said he was going to live stream the bomb on Omegle? (laughs) No, he needed people to head to Omegle to find clues about what he was going to do. Okay, so he was kind of trying I to get people they to were... dismantle the bomb? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he if was just could. trying to insert himself into the investigation, if that makes sense. A like classic he was, unsub behavior. Yes, he was trying to cause chaos. That's scary. And he kept sending this one Bible, this one Bible verse mm-hmm. section about Sodom and Gomorrah and about how they turned to stone for being like, for falling into their sin or whatever and that One Direction was supposed to be our sin and that we had fallen and that we needed to pass for that. Did anyone find Mr. X? I think that I it was a collection I can't bear to think of, that Mr. X is so I think it was large. a collection of, <laughs> of young people that were just kind of interested in terror. But... <laughs> were they One Direction fans or just truly like a... I don't... I Brooke, I don't know. I okay. cannot believe you missed that I boat. can't believe... I am terrified to think that Mr. X or people who contributed to the mix, Mr. X personality are still walking, walking around. Earth, yes. Yeah. But that all that being said, that imagine was around that time because people were like, well, we need to prepare for their passing. Oh, my God. Megan, I had no idea. This is like, I'm going to have to send you. Yeah. A lot. of That's really. That's scary. No, incredibly, incredibly terrifying. Yeah. Hey, guys, we want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. ZocDoc. Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do it. You know when you refuse to make coffee at home because that fancy coffee shop is right downstairs and way better? Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It's your health, after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top-tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated, patient reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. 
You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat basically any condition that you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 and 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. I use ZocDoc and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash obsessed and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash obsessed. ZocDoc.com slash obsessed. I want to talk about the girlfriends Mm -hmm. of the boys Mm -hmm. because I think it was while they were on X Factor that they had this set of girlfriends. Or right after Yeah, X like Factor. right after. Louis was dating Eleanor, mm-hmm. who was just, I don't think, she wasn't famous. She was just a gorgeous, gorgeous woman. Um, Liam was dating Danielle Pizer, who was a dancer. Mm-hmm. And Zane That they was, met on X Factor. Met on X Factor. And Zane was dating Perry Edwards, who, was she on the next year of X Factor? Yes. So they had met in the X Factor space. Um, she was in Little Mix. And this is the only time in my life that I have ever supported women in the sense of like somebody that I love, i.e. Louie, i.e. Liam, i.e. Zane, somebody that I love was dating. Like Mm -hmm. now it's like if my crush is dating someone, can't look at them, don't support them, like makes me sick. I wanted to be these girls. I wanted to be them. I wanted to be their best friends. I needed Mm -hmm. to be in their community. So there was something particularly about Eleanor, I think because... She was the first girlfriend. Uh-huh. I think Louis had been dating her before. Before I, so it was like she oh she oh my god she I still look at her and I get goosebumps. I still she follow is, her on Instagram by the way. Of, Megan, of course. I'll never stop following. I named her. my car Eleanor. Good and I've time. I've never like I don't know what that was about them. It was completely like, and she also was so it girl vibes of the time like so Tumblr vibes. She also had which. It's a little problematic. She had the skinniest legs. And so it just looked, I mean, she just looked perfect. Like all of her pictures that you would reblog on Tumblr were so of the time. She was Tumblr. She was. The backbone. She, and she also, I feel like other girlfriends of uh, famous people do not do this enough. She embraced us. That's a good point. She embraced us. And there was, she was not threatened by us. Yeah, no, she wasn't because who, how could she, how could Eleanor be threatened by anyone? She's, perfect but yeah that is the last time i supported a girlfriend a girlfriend of a of a crush if you will and even like i know harry and niall didn't have like real true girlfriends Uh during the time but there was that picture of harry in the closet with the girl on the floor yes and then i completely there was that girl that that i think her name was amelia that was in the back of one of niall's twit cams Uh she came into frame Uh uh-huh and i have never felt feelings of rage like that before (laughs) in my life so it wasn't even like it it was those women in particular that made the safe space because other women entering the space just did not fit you bring up a good point it was zane liam and louis Louis. and not harry and niall which i think i was like maybe subcon on a subconscious level as long as it's not harry and niall i am like i'm thrilled that it's not harry and niall so i'm embracing these girls with mm-hmm. everything I have. Mm-hmm. But then once they started, they all broke up eventually. And the girls that they dated after, I was like, this is Have this nothing is to do with them. This I First sick. of all, I can barely remember their names. I don't remember their... There was one girl, Liam Sophia? dated Sophia, that I was like, Liam, I think I truly tweeted Liam. And I was like, Liam, you have to get out of this relationship. She's not in it for the right reasons. Because she was... She was gorgeous. Some, she had a, he had a crush on her in school. And I remember oh. thinking, like, Liam, if she didn't like you then, she likes you now for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. And I was so adamant about that. And I needed Liam out of that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they were engaged, too. Oh. Maybe not. I don't know But that. Zane was for sure engaged to Perry. Perry. And no, the, so the they got engaged. And we all found out on the day of the British premiere of This Is Us. Is that what the movie was called? Yes. Okay, sorry. I remember, like true tears of joy as if this was my brother getting getting engaged Uh when i saw those images today present day if i woke up tomorrow and harry styles was engaged to a young woman i would burn los angeles down i would be (laughs) bedridden for months you would not see my face i mean it it they were so special Mm -hmm. and 
they they accepted us. We accepted them. Mm-hmm. There was just the, it could never be replicated. Mm-mm. It could truly never be replicated. No. And that was the last time that I supported women in that way. Yeah. So and me as well. Yeah. I'll never do it again. I, I don't think I don't think I'm capable. It I was fun while it lasted. It, re- it really I would do. And trust me, I would do anything to be able to feel that way again. Can't. Can't. It was a moment in time. OK, I've been dreading. But do we want to talk about March 25th, 2000? And 15? Yeah. The day that Zayn left the band. Where were you? I, you know, I knew I knew the whole time his heart wasn't in it. And I've said that. So I wasn't like okay. shocked beyond belief. But of course, it's still shocking. I was in college. I was a freshman in college. And I was student teaching. Mm. And so I didn't have my phone okay. while with the kids. And I remember getting back on the bus. And the immediately the energy was off. <laughs> Like someone was crying, like some people were silent and it was like a loud group of people. So I was like, oh my God, what's going on? What was the age group of the children? Uh, Kindergarten. Oh, okay. But But I had gotten back on the bus with teachers. Oh, not kids. Okay. 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 um, To go back to BU. Okay. And someone had said to me, Zane has, has decided to leave the band. I just got chills. I rode, it was a 45 minute bus ride back to be my head was out the window I thought I was going to be sick I I, as you've said his vocals were the best in the band Mm -hmm. I didn't know if they were going to be able to go on Mm -hmm. and also historically once one member leaves it crumbles it crumbles so it was really like the band is ending but you know they did go on Mm -hmm. and they made one more album and it was great one of their best one of their best without Zane um and then they they are now they're on a break. hiatus they're on a hiatus hiatus they're, is going to be as long as they need to be. exactly what matters about the hiatus is that they will come back mm-hmm. the thing is i like i don't even care that they said it was going to be 18 months mm-hmm. i don't 18 months could really be any amount of time if you think about it one direction has never broken up never and that's what and that's what we need to take away from this they're on hiatus take as long as you yeah. need i have always been an advocate for taking breaks. Me as Normalize well. Normalize taking breaks. If you They're need a break, a ten-year break, uh, no skin off my back. Go ahead, they'll be back. Mm-hmm. I really believe that they'll be back. And when they do, do you think Zayn will be back with them? I don't. I don't either. He's gone. I don't. He's I think gone. he's he's lost in fatherhood uh-huh. now. Yeah, he did have some good solo songs. Pillow talk. Pillow talk. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Harry obviously doing. He's doing well for himself mm-hmm. in the wake of. The hiatus. Niall well, as well. The thing about Harry and Niall is like they took this hiatus and most people would say, let's take a break. Mm-hmm. They said, I'm going to di- I'm going to throw myself into some work mm-hmm. so that when the hiatus ends, we can be ready with new creative ideas. And, and so, rather than resting, they're working. They're working to work even harder. That's gorgeous, Megan. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I love about them is that they will. Actually, I don't know about Niall. I've never been to a Niall concert. I haven't but either. Harry sings one direction songs i think niall does as well they will ne- those boys will never forget where they came from no seriously and so you know what that's my biggest gripe with liam mm-hmm. that's my biggest gripe with liam i would have listened to his music as much as physically possible had he not written disparage the name had he not written with his pen used to be in 1d now, now i'm out, out free, free. That is a lyric in his one popular solo song, Strip That Town. Do you understand how damaging that is? That is heavy. You hear I participated in the down payment of your house. And you're going to tell me that you're out free? <laughs> Megan, it's sick. It's sick and twisted. And I've never looked at him the same. And he has and gone on to, he's to say worse things. And he's devolved. He has completely, completely devolved mentally, physically. I wish him the best, though. But <laughs> Would never say a bad word about oh him. Oh, my God, no. But I think he's coming around. Because him and Louie have had... They had a big blowout on Twitter, Mm -hmm. but they have since been pictured together having some sort of reconciliation or not at all. I just, I just don't trust him. No, he's a snake. Speaking of snake, do you remember when there there's a snake habitat habitat turn around? Mm -hmm. There was, um, like, I feel like the one like moment of one direction on Twitter that I remember is they were in Australia. Right. Mm -hmm. And girls were like storming the hotel. And Liam was, I think I actually screenshotted this. Liam was like, Girls, like, please, 
leave, we are in an active snake habitat. And they didn't leave. And he tweeted, <laughs> all caps, are you not reading what I'm saying? It's a snake habitat. Turn around. And that mm-hmm. is something I also want tattooed. Yeah. I, they, um, they used to make shirts with that. I remember that was I want a big one. deal. Um, as well as another piece of One Direction Twitter history, the day that Liam's kidney grew back. Oh my God, I forgot about his kidney. That was so powerful. Because that was similar to like when we found out Nick Jonas had diabetes and mm-hmm. we thought he had days to live. Yep. Liam's kidney issues, I was like, he's we he, we he's don't sick. have much time with him. And then miraculously, he tweeted on he, that his kidney it had grown returned. back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Medical. Medical marvels. marvel. Did, do we think that that actually did happen, though, looking back? Well, he's, he also, which I, like, you don't have to, like, really show us your medical records, but he did tweet the ultrasound of the new kidney. Right. Maybe that's available for... Could we see if Liam's ultrasound is, <laughs> is still is up? on Google? Maybe he logged out of his portal, so he can't look at the results any longer. Um. Also, on April 3rd, 2013, Harry tweeted, Hi, comma, Slept all day, ate cereal at 5 p.m. We would never hear something like that from him again, Mm -mm. which I miss. Like we've lost all of the communication communication and Harry being a person. Like now he's just kind of like God mode, Mm -hmm. which make, yeah, I get it. But like there's, he wouldn't, he could never say something like that. As simple as hi, slept all day, ate cereal at 5 p.m. He could never say that again. Did you ever get banned on Twitter for spamming? No, but I had had a different sort of incident on Twitter mm. that involved me being catfished by um, Niall's father, Bobby Horan. And I was in communication with Bobby almost every day. Okay, how's Niall? How's Greg, Niall's brother, Greg? Mm-hmm. Um, how's Theo, Niall's nephew, nephew, Greg's son? How's Denise, Greg's wife? You know, and Bobby would reassure me constantly, everyone's good. Thank you for asking. I'll, say, I'll tell Niall that you've been asking. Thank you, Bobby. It had come out that Niall was a, uh, Niall's dad, Bobby, was a young woman who no. had been catfishing. No. <laughs> all of us. And there was, during one D-Day, which was like, they were just live streaming all day. All day. I was talking to Bobby all day and being like tell Niall to do this to say hi to me like tell Niall to like give a thumbs up for me and he be- and Bobby would be like okay I'll tell Niall and at one point Niall had given like a thumbs up and I was like oh my god Niall That's speaking it. directly to me via one D-Day via Bobby telling fake Bobby unfortunately telling him so sorry bro it's okay but yeah so sorry that is that was my Twitter play I was really into Twitter um and, you know, like once, so Harry's tweeted, I'm in bed all day eating cereal at 5 p.m. Then people would just start to respond because he was online, which I don't think I really understood. I was tweeting just all of the time. Right. But if he's online, he's getting more notifications. Right. He's looking. Um, my original One Direction Stan Twitter account, Horan Hugs 97 mm-hmm. rest in peace, was able to be Horn disbanded Hugs. and um, terminated from Twitter due to harassment <laughs> so what we would do is if harry you never know when any of them are going to be online mm-hmm. so you just have t- drafts ready to go right but you couldn't tweet the same thing over and over again because then you would be spamming right so what you'd have to do is hi harry i love you so much one hi harry i love you so much two hi harry i love you so much you thought of three. everything yeah okay so now we're getting into hi harry i love you so much 400 <laughs> and we are letting them out in mass and then they were able to shut the account down damn i had amassed almost 2,000 followers in less than a month of being on one direction twitter due to my just like rap like just rabid could not stop tweeting and also could not just dis- stop discussing i would you love- were an og content creator pushing I- out content <laughs> left and right like a goddamn machine and then it was stripped away from me and then i had to rebrand into um, an account that I cannot name because it may or may not still be active. Is it your Is it your current? No. Nope. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can offline. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So let's dive into a what questions do you have for me segment. segment. Kenny, take it away. I have many. Um, and this has been illuminating. And I want to thank you for including me in this today. Do you feel like this was entertaining for you as somebody who did not really know anything about One Direction? 
Yeah, and I'm I'm truly envious of the passion that you have for this because I'm hard pressed to think of something in life that I've been this passionate about. Uh-huh. And I hope that I can one day get to something. Uh, this this you've clearly thought about this for years, mm-hmm. and I I hope that I have some seed like that planted that I can cherish like you've cherished one direction you can very well said kenny and maybe that could be our goal of obsessed is finding your seed that's great Mm -hmm. i would love that let's plant some seeds okay okay question one has the one direction community and our society as a whole given nicole the credit she deserves in the in the last three years yes but we had no idea that she was involved until a very we thought it was all Simon mm. until a video was released of Nicole actually literally forming, forming. them with pictures. And Simon had nothing to do with this it. This was released on You're the kidding. ten year anniversary of One Direction in twenty twenty. So she so, she put them together her with her own two hands herself. So then why did Simon get credit? Because it's like his like his record show, label. Oh. His show. Record label. Yeah. That's, that's a man's world, Kenny. Yeah, that's it, not is he well said. Say it louder into the mic. It is a man's world. Yeah. Mm. What was your first One Direction concert experience like? That was my first real concert too. Wow. Because the only concerts I had been to before that were High School Musical. Okay. And like Cheetah Girls. Oh, like kind of like the show. Kind of like kids. Yeah. Um, I like changed changed my life. I don't, I can't think of another way to, to say it. And you saw that in Philly? Saw that in Camden, New Jersey. So yeah. Okay. Essentially. But one, like the best night of my life. And that was the first time I experienced post-concert depression. Going to school the next day, I Paralyzing. was like, I'm dropping out. There is no point of living if I'm not at the One Direction concert. 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's, the, it's a really serious type of depression that I want to see like put in the DSM. Like as a actual, like the book of oh, yep, like psychological of disorders. Whatever. Yeah. Like post-concert depression. That's real. Mm-hmm. Were you aware your con- your aware your t shirt to school the next day type of person for the next few weeks? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely yeah. unwashed, as it was in the same space at the merch table as the boys. Hundred yeah. percent. I'm completely right there, and I just want to let you in on um, a piece of privilege that you have as a as a One Direction fan mm-hmm. living in a high metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. I had to travel for two of the three One Direction experiences that I saw. I had to leave the state. That just shows your dedication. When they do the personalized shout outs, Philly, let me hear you make some noise. You don't understand how it feels to be in Atlanta. Atlanta, let me hear you make some noise. That's not me. You don't know how it feels to be Houston. Let me hear you make some noise. That's not me. The One (laughs) Direction show in New Orleans, where we are tour, September 25th, 2014. I will literally never forget Zane, of all people, New Orleans, we are so excited to be here tonight. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Megan, I have goosebumps. That's not something I ever thought about. Brooke? Checking my privilege as we speak. Check your privilege at the door. (laughs) Wow. It really was. New Orleans feels like a place that concerts should go. And they do, but it's like when it matters, it they won't be. Because Houston and Atlanta and like Dallas are such bigger cities in the South that it's like, okay, if we're going to do that, we want to get kind of like the most bang for our buck. Interesting. Um, But my first One Direction concert I did see in Atlanta and my dad drove me and it was a beautiful father-daughter experience. He would have the complete opposite reaction to that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And um, I really do not give my dad enough credit. That day he – so it's about like six and a half or seven hours to drive from New Orleans to Atlanta. We did that morning. We got kind of like 5 a.m. leaving the house to get to the show. Um, Then we immediately had to go to the arena where I was going to stand out there and I brought them some presents, of course, that I was just going to hand over. Um, And we saw them getting out of the bus and then walking into the venue. And that was it. And I was like, I could have died that's incredible and then um my dad was like okay well we've you know we've been kind of on the road and you're about to go to the show also i went to the show alone um niall tweeted because he saw us he goes i see you out there drink lots of water it's super hot i took that as bible 
I will not be eating any food as that was not my given instruction. <laughs> I will only be drinking water for the rest of the day. My dad um, had lunch and was so scared. He was like, please, you're going to this show by yourself. Like, I need you he to eat something. He did go with you into the venue solo. Okay. Solo, completely solo. Um, and I was able to work myself up in the first opening minutes fainting. Mm -hmm. If you had not had a medical emergency at a One Direction concert, you could not call yourself a true fan. Fainted. I heard the entirety of the last concert I went to from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. I, and it also was happening where, um, at a time where it was almost like you wanted to have a medical experience at the concert because then they would pay attention to you. Yeah. So I fainted. And it was when the lights were coming out. It, it was just hot and I hadn't eaten anything. And they had not been on stage. The rest of the show, locking my knees to faint again so that they could see there's a, there's there's a, girl, a girl down. Yeah. <laughs> there's a girl down. As also, especially because one of the first Justin Bieber concerts I went to, a young woman had a seizure. Oh, God. Um, and she's okay. <laughs> um, but she did get a personalized stop. Justin addresses the crowd, asks for medical attention for her. And kind of get a, get a shout out. Her yeah. name was Sarah. That is the dream. That is, like, so if I I'm was glad she's okay, but I'll and, never live that. And now. I'm glad she's okay. That being said, you you were smart. You're entrepreneur, Megan. That's thank you. good thinking together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's just like any 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 ounce of attention I could have gotten, mm -hmm. I would have hit them with a car. Mm -hmm. I would have gotten into a traffic accident mm -hmm. like with them. I would anything to have a bit of FaceTime completely completely aligned there is nothing that i would not have done for them to this day them, I, I, to I don't even feel embarrassed to say that like i would to do the same I, that's a question i had for you do you think as 25 and 26 year old women sitting here if one direction was formed today at the ages they were when they were formed harry 16 louis 19 everyone in between would we love them I think yes, but it would be a completely different. It wouldn't experience. be. It would be. Well, it oh, couldn't be. It would. I love those songs yeah, on the radio. Right. It uh, maybe be I cool. would go see a show if it was convenient, mm -hmm. but I would not be. It wouldn't be to the level. There's just no, no way it could be. It, right. Yeah. Our I brains agree. are fully formed now. Yeah. Back then they were they <laughs> were flesh. <laughs> <laughs> they were flesh. They were putty, and they were molded mm -hmm. by them. Kenny, do you have any other questions? I'll ask the big one. Okay. And I think you know what's coming. Do I? Do you think One Direction will one day end their hiatus? 100% yes. I, yeah, I do. With, but not with Zane. Not with Zane. Right. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think I, they might I, be able I, to do yeah. Zane I have no doubt in my mind. one night. I have no doubt in my mind only. that they will do something. I think it will be like an event, a specific event they're reuniting for. I don't think they'll do like a specific like, oh, we're doing a few shows as One Direction. I think it'll be for an event. Um, and I look forward to it and I'll yeah. be, you better believe. Oh, every, I will take out credit damaging loans. <laughs> I like not, I will do whatever it takes to not only be there to be sitting on the stage. Present. Present. Can I ask Kenny a question? Yes. What questions do you yeah. for Kenny, Megan? <laughs> My question for Kenny is, do you feel like you were able to get enough information where you were able to make a decision on which One Direction member is your favorite? Oh, man. Uh, Good question, Megan. I feel like I'm being shown around a house party and I'm meeting these guys, mm -hmm. but I don't feel... I, I like to get coffee with them one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. okay. get to know them a little more. Um, if you... Held a gun to me. Mm -hmm. I know Harry the most. Mm -hmm. okay. I think he's got that guy's got talent. Yeah, you could say that again. I'm a Harry guy, and there's nothing wrong with there's that. There's nothing wrong with that. Wear yeah. that with yeah. pride. People yeah. used to be ashamed to say that. And yeah, I'll yeah. Say it because it was just the obvious yeah. choice. But it's like, you know I what? Hope... The obvious choice is a, the obvious choice for a reason. Yeah, and I hope that's not too safe of a pick. But I, I could retract and pick somebody no. else at a no, later, no, no. later date. No, no, no. I maybe, and this might be controversial for Brooke. Can I maybe? It's also controversial for me. Direct you to the Night Changes music video. That would be able to give you an experience of having one-on-one -on -one personal time with all of them. Interesting. Great idea, Megan. Okay. Because that is going to offer you POV or on a date with each individual. 
because oh. it's just like showing a hand. So it's YN. It's your hand. Okay. It's supposed okay. to be your hand, and you're going yeah. on a date with each of the boys. Oh my god! It's, oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Is it is. And this is the best that they've all ever looked. This era of Z. I am going to freak out. I, I might be changing my answer. Oh my! He, it, it, the it, voice on this guy—it doesn't Kenny. even make sense that he could have been. Wow, he ben was Winston. He, he, <laughs> he started out with like the bad kind of faux hawk and like earrings mm -hmm. at his audition, like just like so, like what, like what are you wearing to transform into this man standing in front of us on the screen? It, it's. It is mind blowing. That really is like if you ask Chat GBT to produce like the most like the conventionally most handsome man in the world, that's what they're spitting out. Brooke Actually I didn't like Harry's long hair. Oh yeah. that's controversial. Uh, yeah. I mean it did get too long at one point. It's fine but... here, but when it was too long, I was mm -hmm. Can I step in and just say, Hey, watch it? That's my guy you're talking about. Oh. Now that I'm uh, yeah. Very good. And very good, Kenny. Thank you. I've created a monster, but very good. Okay, and I'll leave you with some of Megan's favorite One Direction songs mm -hmm. and some of mine in the hopes that you're inspired to listen to those after this episode. So, Megan, you love Stockholm Syndrome, mm -hmm. written by Louis. Louis Clouds. Louis. Also written by Louis T. Walking in the Wind. Hair, that's Harry S. Summer Love. That's Nile. Change Your Ticket. I think that's going to be a collaborative effort. Change Your Ticket is the one that is the <laughs> ripoff of Girls by the 1975, mm -hmm. which we love. Okay, my favorite's 18, mm -hmm. Stockholm Syndrome, mm -hmm. okay. Clouds, mm -hmm. Night Changes. That's good. Back For You. That's good. Last First Kiss. And this is controversial. Irresistible is a bonus track mm -hmm. on, I think, the fourth album? It's on Midnight Memories. On Midnight Memories? Okay. One of their best songs. In my opinion, you don't like it. I, I it's I, a ballad. It's a ballad, and I am anti-ballad, and mm -hmm. Brooke is pro. I which love like I I, a ballad. I wouldn't say that I dislike eighteen, but if there was an opportunity to, to skip, skip it, you would. I would skip. Damn, Megan. Me? I think I'd skip walking in the wind. What? I don't. I don't think I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. Even knowing the origin story. A little, it's not my favorite. Wow. Yeah. That's okay. It I mean, that's okay. okay. There's something for everyone. And even their worst song is still good. It's still the best thing I've ever heard. And we'll leave you with that. Hopefully you can listen to some of those songs and you enjoyed this and you are back in your One Direction era after listening to this or are entering it for the first time like Kenny. I'm in. I'm in mm -hmm. the One Direction and we era. And we're happy to Welcome. have you. Welcome. Make yourself Thank you. comfortable. Thank you very much. Thanks for having okay. me. Thanks for coming, yeah. Megan. Thank you for having me, Brooke. Thank you for carrying the show on your back. <laughs> um, and I hope that you come back. I hope so. I've, yeah. got a, I've got a lot of other obsessions to talk about. And I know you do. And I'm, I can't wait to talk about them with you. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs>